Hello everyone from across the globe, wherever you're watching this, I'm Nick Goldsmith and today we are going to be going through bushcraft basics, okay, and we're going to be looking at beginner's tools. The fundamentals, those core fundamentals that get you started on your bushcraft specific journey. Now there's an awful lot of kit and equipment out there and this can be a real minefield. So today I thought I'd uh, head up to the main camp here, lay out a load of equipment and then let you guys at home have a little watch. Let me know what you think in the comments box below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button and uh, we can discuss that afterwards. Let's get into it. I'm gonna work around just the bare essentials and the fundamentals that I think we need to be using to get started into bushcraft in the outdoors. So I'm not gonna look at everything here, but I am gonna be stopping every now and again and pointing out something and saying, look, that's a fundamental, that's something you need as a beginner. You definitely need one of these. So to start with, you're going to need a bag of some description. Now, I've got a number of different options here, uh, ranging from classic large literage military Bergens, okay, the sort of thing that you'll be taking for up to a week away in the uh, woods. I've got some, some kind of more specialist hybridized kit where I've used bits and pieces from my past life in the military, bolted them to the front of something. Much more applicable, much more sensible is something like the classic Carrymore SF uh, 45 litre day sack. Okay, uh, really, really rugged, fantastic construction. It's got this amazing ability to put these huge side bins on the side. Okay, you can add these on or take them away. They zip up. It's all very industrialized zipping. You can even bolster these things up with these um, buckles here. You can additionally, um, even sometimes I uh, add hydro packs and bits and pieces and you know, you can literally just keep bolting things onto these. They put up with an awful lot of punishment. They're still available. It's a hugely popular bag and it's been around for a very long time. Now, up until this point, I've been running around with this quite simple, lovely little laptop bag. However, the zip has finally died and it's come to the end of its life. So the changing of the guard. Okay, that's coming off. That is now done. And I've bought myself something new and I've gone for the EDC Helicon um, pack, backpack, which is pretty much the same as this one here that I've heavily hybridized. I'm just gonna keep this for my everyday, day-to-day -day stuff. It's ideal for bushcraft. It's ideal for sticking a laptop in and going to town. Now, as you can see, it comes with these molly bits on here. And, and as a tool for bushcraft, this is pretty much, and I would class this as a tool, this is absolutely ideal. Um, this is gonna get me uh, around day to day. Uh, it's got something like 21 liters of, uh, of size in there. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick the all encompassing bags on there. It's official, the new bag is in action. Okay, so if you decide you're going to stay over the night in the woods, okay, with your, your rucksack, you might need something to sleep in or sleep under. So you could go ahead and get something like one of these little ponchos. I've already made a video on, check out the link to that. You can get them in a number of colors. Obviously there's a camouflage here, or you can go for a much more of a woodland pattern. Do also be sure, because they don't always come with them, to grab hold of some tent pegs. Now, if you can't get hold of tent pegs, guys, pretty much just, I mean, ask about on social media, there's always somebody with an old broken tent that's getting rid of some tent pegs. Okay, so some kind of shelter to sleep under and some tent pegs to secure it would be handy. Now that shelter could be a great big tarpaulin. It doesn't have to be something for just yourself. If you're thinking about getting out there with the family, something like the DD Hammocks, they do an XL size tarp, which is three meters by four and a half. Check out the multiple videos that we've made using this thing and all the different configurations. Something to sleep in and on. Just a good old fashioned foam roll mat, which won't break the bank at all, just to get you started. As time goes on, you can literally spend up to about a hundred pounds or more on something like a really fancy X-bed, you know, synthetic or sin mat or something like that. But to start with, the humble foam roll mat, even here in the British, great British outdoors, okay, never fails. It's a, it's a good trusty piece of kit. Before I got into the world of hammocks, okay, I also carry a really lightweight little silk hammock everywhere I go, that's quite handy. I was very much about sleeping on the floor for years and through my formative years I slept on the floor. I got into hammocking quite late into the game. I see the benefits of a hammock, the quick setup, the lightweight kind of option. Um, it's a great thing to have in, in your bag and, and a great thing to learn how to use. So definitely carry one. Sleeping bags, they come in every shape, size and form. I'll stick some links in here below along with all these other kind of 
essential basic fundamental tools. Um, it's a tool. It's going to keep you warm, dry, safe. Some kind of waterproof outer to go over the top. And again, you know, being a former military man, it's quite easy to get hold of these kind of Gore-Tex bivvy bags. If you can't get hold of one of those, do you know what? One of these survival bags will do. It's the same thing. It's a giant plastic condom that you're going to put your sleeping bag into uh, and keep you nice and safe and protected. Something to secure the whole thing together. Paracord. This is a much debated subject. How thin, how long, how much to carry, how much tensile strength does it need to have? Look guys, this is very much trial and error, a lot of this stuff, okay? You don't have to disappear into the woods with a great big thick piece of rope, okay? You can just pretty much get away with using some small paracord bank line if you're in America. There's so much out there. I'd say 550 paracord as kind of a being safe go to. You can get survival cord, which has got multiple strands inside it, which has got fire lighting strands and all kinds of really cool stuff. Just keep things simple to start with. Type in 550 paracord or I'll stick a link in below. Go for something like that. This is eight mil um, or 10 mil rope. So it's just like a lighter weight um, rope. You can get this in varying places. You might happen to know someone who's an ex-tree surgeon or something like that, and you can get hold of something. Guys, you're not climbing on it, remember? It's just for putting up your, your bed space or supporting a tarpaulin. Um, that might be another cheaper option. Okay, something to kind of cook with uh, or, or kind of eat with. So here, looking at here, I've got two different options, both tried and tested, both absolutely bomb-proof. One is the mighty Stanley cup. Okay, so company Stanley make this cup that has been heavily used and abused. I think I've pretty much broken the lid now. And then you've got uh, a Nalgene uh, bottle. Now the Nalgene, this Nalgene bottle holds not quite a litre, I think it's three quarters of a litre. Okay, and that just happens to sit quite nicely in here. Now what's important about this stuff and why you need this as a beginner is you can suspect, go ahead and suspend this stuff over the campfire fairly simply. Okay, you can rig it up or you can just place it into the embers and boil water and make things safe to drink. And again, same sort of thing, not so much with the, uh, with the bottle. This is the British Military Standard Crusader mug. This is a bomb-proof, tried and tested piece of equipment. As you can see, it's heavily used. I use this an awful lot. Check out last week's video where I was baking, I was baking bread and making items in this. Guys, there are so many options when it comes to uh, metal mugs and cooking equipment, personal cooking equipment. You could go ahead and use companies like Heavy Cover, Pathfinder, loads and loads of companies out there. There's also loads of old, surplus stuff okay you can get like old eastern bloc czechoslovakian um swedish military mess tins there's all kinds of stuff out there have a little look do some research on your forums find out what's going to work for you and your price plan because you can spend an awful lot of money or you can just spend like enough money to get you started and then upgrade your kit as you go which is what i advise you do you know if you're just getting into bushcraft don't go out there and break the bank straight away because uh, you could easily spend over a hundred pound on a bag, over a hundred pound on a sleeping system, over a hundred pound on what you sleep under or in, over a hundred pound on all the bits that go in between. Before you know it, you've spent easily the wrong side of a thousand pounds. That's not what this is about, okay? I want you guys to just have a better idea, be a bit more informed about what it is you're gonna go ahead and get, get involved in. With bushcraft, okay, unlike, unlike walking up a mountain, um, here's, here's a classic example, two gloves, okay? So I've got some lovely North Face wind stopper gloves, okay, perfectly acceptable for pulling out and, uh, and putting on if you're maybe halfway up a mountain, you have to stop for a little break for something, great. Or uh, you can go for some heavy duty leather gloves, fleece lined on the inside, Okay, these are much more applicable for bushcraft um, as the reality is you might need to fish a red hot salt, uh, pan or, or cup off of a campfire. Using these, okay, is gonna ensure you don't get burnt. Using these, these will just simply melt. All of these lightweight tech fibers generally don't tend to stand up very well in heat. Here's a classic example. Look at the state of my t-shirt, okay? Uh, this is an old t-shirt I've had for many years um, since we started the business and it is absolutely filled with little holes where red hot embers have got me over the years. Snoods, okay, another item, a really handy item of equipment that I would say you go out and get some kind of a snood or neck over item. One of the other items you're definitely going to need is a decent jacket. At the moment I'm using this Narona 
Okay, organic cotton, super lightweight, light wicking. If it does get soaked and it does finally, the, the water does so, finally start to come through, um, I can also, it breathes really, really well and it wicks really well and it dries out just as fast, okay? Let's just move these out of the way. A good quality jumper um, and some merino wool base layers. Okay, these are really handy as well. Here is a fundamental tool that we've not spoken about yet and something that I'm definitely gonna make a video on very soon. It is the humble compass. Okay, now the humble compass is a fantastic tool, like any tool, so long as you know how to use it. Same with the map. It's great having a map. Okay, I've got a map of my local area I've had customized. But again, if you can't read that map or you can't apply that knowledge, useless. So when you clicked on this video, you would have been thinking, tools, tools. Well, yes, but all the other things I've shown you here today as well are also tools and are also absolutely pivotal to you in enjoying your experience in the outdoors in a sort of bushcraft context. There are lots of words that get banded about like survival, bushcraft, mountaineering, and they all have their own respective crossover with each other, but then they also have their own specific niche uh, needs and requirements. And what we're talking about here with bushcraft is, is that craft element. So inevitably we're going to need uh, tools in, in an order for us to better our, our interaction with the outdoors when we want to actually make things. Let's just start with the axes. Now I've got two axes here to show you. Okay, this is a Gransfjord's small forest axe. Now the handle is pretty much from my elbow all the way up to my, my fingertips. It's pretty much that, that's the kind of length of this thing. It's a good foot and a half long um, and it comes with this nice leather sheath on the top. I've made a specific video about how I care for this item. Okay, and, and what all this wrapping here is all about. But you can see it's, it's a beautifully hand forged item. I keep it relatively sharp. This is something that sees almost daily use in the woods. Now, the benefit of having that slightly longer shaft over one of those small camp hatchets is I get a greater level of leverage. Okay, and I can bring this down with more speed. The head's about a pound and a half in weight. Okay, and it really busts open wood grain really well. If you can't go out and afford one of these, because again, one of these could probably set you back anything up to almost a hundred pounds, like I don't know what that is in dollars, but at least 70 pounds. This thing here was gifted to me. Okay, very fortunately, I had a friend who's practicing some leather work and he very kindly made a little sheath for me. Okay, um, I've done some more research on this. Now, when I first found it, it's made by Renault. Um, this, this was actually given to me uh, by a friend who he found it in a French market and he bought the head for, for absolutely pennies. And all he's done is he's taken some time to clean it up. He's made a new handle from Sweet Chestnut, okay, and he's shaped it for a right-handed person. And again, the amount of weight that's in the head here with a nice convex bevel, okay, this is gonna do the job all day long. Guys, you could just start off with something from the hardware store. It's, it's not gonna be ideal, it's not gonna be the best thing you've ever seen ever, but it's not gonna be the worst either, and it's not gonna let you down, uh, especially in one of those kind of composite plastic type handles. If you throw that with enough weight correctly and apply the technique uh, down into a piece of wood, it should split open and do what it says in the tin. As time goes on, you could maybe upgrade to something like a Grand Fjords or Halter Fjords or one of those kind of lovely Swedish Scandinavian brands. Okay, but to start off with, uh, just get yourself an axe that feels good in your hand, isn't too heavy um, to, to wield, and that uh, you know you can find a way to fix to the outside of your pack or inside your pack somehow, depending on where you live, whether you're going from urban to rural environment, rural to urban, etc. Uh, it's not a good idea to always have your axe knife and saw on show on the on the outside of your kit. Torch, a torch is a fantastic tool to have. Okay, uh, I do quite a lot of nature watching and there is actually a rather large badger set, British, the English badger. It's the closest thing we have to a bear just beyond there. Um, and uh, sometimes when I have the deer coming through the woodland as well, so I'll put the red filter on there um, and that doesn't disturb them so much. Sharpening and maintaining your axes and your knives, which we're just gonna cover. Okay, something like a Lansky Blade Medic might be quite handy as a tool. Again, it's only so good as you know how to use one of these things. If you don't want to use one of those, you could go ahead and learn how to use one of these little uh, sharpening stones. I've made a video on this, guys, so you should know about this. You can check that video out, watch it, digest, 
uh, teach yourself at home how to sharpen stuff. Okay, so this is a uh, CD4, you can get a DC4 and they're made by a company called Falcon Ivan. Again, links will go below. On to the knives. I think this is pretty much the bit that most people get very excited about. There are so many knives out there, you could lose yourself in the world of knives. You could spend four or five hundred pounds on a knife uh, and, and, and have all sorts of stuff engraved into it and pass it down through generation to generation or you can go out and buy a knife for like you know like twenty dollars like fifteen pounds ten fifteen pounds and uh, and that will do you perfectly well to, to get started. At the school I use these for teaching this is number 11. Um, I've just grabbed this out of the box Okay, this is a model called the Companion. Now the Companion model is a fantastic one for starting in the outdoors. As you can see, they come in a series of bright sheaths. Okay, porous in the end here, so that it, uh, if you get any water in there, that will run out. Um, and you can see it's got a good rubber, heavily rubberized grip, uh, a classic Scandinavian grind. If you don't know what I'm on about, again, refer to the knife sharpening video, and that will explain about grinds and bits and pieces. This one is in stainless. Okay, which means it's stainless less, doesn't mean it doesn't stain. Uh, so it will still need some love and care and attention. It's really light in the hand. The metal pretty much stops about midway. So this is a half tang blade. These will set you back about 12 to 15 pounds. This is what I use for 90% of the lessons that we're teaching. Uh, people are using these, learning to make spoons, learning to make shelters, learning to do all kinds of craft elements and stuff. It's got a simple clipping system on the back and you can actually clip multiple knives to each other as well. Mara Knife went ahead and made a whole series of items. Once you have a look at their links, um, wherever you choose to go to find those, um, you'll see all kinds of speciality crook knives and things for carving. Um, all, it basically, they do a massive, massive range of knives. Now, one in particular stands out for me and um, I would say putting my marine head on that this would be something that I would I would lean towards as a beginner's knife for bushcraft um, and you'd probably need look no further to be honest. Okay this is a very old and beaten up one that I've had for years okay um, comes in a black sheath this is the Mora Black and all I've done is I've used a bit of uh, bicycle inner tube put a ferrocene rod up there for fire striking and then put a little bit of cordage on it just to hold the whole thing together but this thing i've had for quite a long time and it's very heavily worn it's in high carbon which means um it, it does need a bit more love and care and it will it's prone to rust i keep it extremely extremely sharp and i generally tend to use this only for carving now this will set you about 35 40 pounds it'll set you back it's got an, a slightly different ergonomic grip the tang goes three quarters of the way into the handle and i would say for the money you pay for the knife you get this would be my absolute choice for people to start off with um, they might never progress on from it they might stay here okay or or they might uh, they might use it to start with and then like i have always have it keep it sharp keep it useful keep it in your bag and good to go because it's, it's it's become a really trusted friend. So I really like that. In terms of a saw, you're going to need some kind of a saw option. There are a lot of companies out there in the market. Uh, the one that springs to mind straight away would be something like a Silky. They are quite expensive, um, revered and used by tree surgeons the world over. Uh, we're talking about sort of Japanese steel here. So if you're completely new to this video, um, then uh, take a look at those guys. Um, if not, I would definitely advocate you, seriously, uh, probably just going out and buying one of these humble little Baco Laplanders. Um, now, at the time I went out and bought 20 of these for the school, Baco only did these in green. They now do them in a bright orange colour, this colour. So I had to make a little red lanyard for the end. They're so utterly simple, okay, very light in the hand. Press where it says press, open this thing out till you hear an audible click. Check it's not going to come around and cut you on the fingers. And what's great about these are they are extremely mild, steel and forgiving. Okay, but with retro fitted overly hardened teeth on the outside edge here. You can work these really, really hard. What I love in particular is the way the nose tapers. So when I'm trying to get in between lots and lots of hazel rods and pick out the one that I want, it, it tends to fit in up against two hazel rods and I can actually get to the one that I want to get to. Some of these type of folding saws you see have got quite a big block here and that can be a real pain because you can't get them into those little places. When you come to close it, just an air of caution, you don't catch your fingers on here if you are new to this. Make sure that it does go all the way down. 
okay uh, and you can buy you can buy or make lots of different sheaths for this we actually started doing these uh, ourselves um, with a local with a veteran uh, next another extra Royal marine who started making these so there you go and uh, they're available from our website now first aid kit you should definitely go out and buy one off the shelf i would say as a as kind of a, a go-to life systems i quite like their stuff um, they do a first aid kit that's, that's relatively good. The other thing I like about it is even if you don't like the first aid kit or you use it all up, you're still left with a bright red canoe bag at the end of this, which can be brought to great effect and used for, for, for other stuff later down the line. These canoe bags are great with a roll top. Okay, you just roll them up and then you can just clip them back together and they're brilliant. Now, what to put inside your first aid kit is totally up to you. When you're first starting out, buy something off the shelf, learn what goes into one of these things, okay? Uh, medication accessories, gloves in, in info, bleeding and breaks, okay? Um, it's quite simple and it, it's kind of in a drop down, it's in a drop down format. Um, and then all I've done is just added the addition of some gloves. That is about as simple as it gets. When you're first starting out, that's not a bad thing to do at all. As time goes on, you'll probably learn to do away with this stuff and find yourself experimenting with Tupperware pots. Okay, starting to put the things that work for you really well in there. Uh, and you're gonna kind of go ahead and make your own IFAC, individual first aid kit. Okay, check out the video we made on IFAC, um, individual first aid kits. And I talk about some of my experience in this world dealing with uh, catastrophic bleeds, bits and pieces, and uh, things that happen on the battlefield. That's just life. Okay, you could of course go ahead and end up carrying some great big massive field medics kit. Um, and some of the stuff you can you can get hold of nowadays. And even this will be quite outdated. Okay, let me have a look in here. Wow, okay, so we've got all kinds of stuff in here. Stuff that I was mainly trained to use in my past life, but now, of course, um, your level of qualification is only so good as the last course you went on to, okay? Knowledge goes a long way, experience goes a long way, guys. Uh, and then you've got the other side of things, and this is real life, legalities, okay? How you treat somebody um, very, very much has, a, has an outcome the other side of things. Gloves again, um, scissors. Okay, these are quite handy if you can get hold of these. Okay, a tourniquet is a very good thing to carry in the outdoors. I've got a couple of tourniquets good to go here. Uh, learn how to use those. Um, things like a Sam splint, maybe not so much, but if you were going on an expedition, one of you carrying this might not be such a bad idea. Um, if somebody does have a bad break, you can splint an arm uh, relatively well. Okay, these Israeli bandages are worth um, an awful lot. Very, very versatile and useful. They have a lot of the same properties of a tourniquet um, with a bleeding pad in there that sucks up an awful lot of blood. You can apply a great level of pressure with these. Um, they are really, really useful. When you're starting out in bushcraft, just get yourself an individual first aid kit off the shelf. Get comfortable with how that works, what should go into, into one of those, um, and, and have it readily available in your bag, however you choose to pack your bag. I am hanging out of my hoop today filming. I'm just struggling. I've not been sleeping very well at all. Yeah, not easy. Tripping over my words, forgetting lots of stuff. All of the classic kind of stuff that comes with uh, complex post-traumatic stress territory, I suppose. Um, it's just just been it's been a rough week. That's all I can say. Um, just got to ride it out and wait for the good times to come back again. I've got Tilly Moo with me. She look after me. You look after me. Won't you, Tilly Moo? Oh, mm -hmm.